Gwinnett Medical Center is now entering Peachtree Corners. Conveniently located in the heart of this thriving community, our new center offers first-rate primary care and specialty services, including cardiology, gastroenterology, neurology, OBGYN, orthopedics, 3D mammography, and x-ray. Learn more about how GMC is making industry-leading healthcare more convenient than ever at GwinnettMedicalCenter.org PTC. When I was younger, I used to give my grandmother massages, and she told me, you have healing hands. <laughs> and at the time, I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't yeah. understand at the time. Uh-huh. Um, but it seemed as other doors were closed, the path to medicine was, was open. It didn't have its obstacles, but I mm. got into medical school. I, pa- I passed out my boards, and I just I had a heart for healing and the gift of mercy. So I was, it was always important, and I, I really enjoyed people's stories. You're listening to Peachtree Corners Life, a weekly online radio show sharing ideas, opinions, and news about the city of Peachtree Corners. Now, your host, Rico Figliolini. Hi, everyone. This is Rico Figliolini, host of Peachtree Corners Life uh, and also publisher of Peachtree Corners Magazine. We're here with a special guest today. Um, Her name is Dr. Barbara Joy Jones, DO, and she's with the GMC Primary Care provider that just opened. They took over, for those people at Peachtree Corners that know well, I mean, it used to be, be the Epolito's restaurant. You would never know. I mean, they gutted out the whole thing, and it looks beautiful inside. We'll show you some pictures later. But I'd like you to introduce yourself a little bit to the listeners, the audience here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Barbara Joy Jones. Thank you, Rico, for the introduction. And I am the lead physician at um, Primary Care um, and multi-specialty clinic in Peachtree Corners. Um, we used to be Gwinnett Medical Center, and now we are Northside. This is day two of this yes. officially being <laughs> Northside. And I am the lead physician, and I'm primary care, which means I'm diapers to depends, and I'm there five days a week. And then we have timeshares of specialists that work on the other side. So we have gastroenterology, right. ob gyn orthopedics. I think we're bringing in neurology. Um and cardiology. Cardiology. Yes. It's amazing. When I when I first visited and they had the media opening and the grand opening in mm-hmm. Ribbon, um, I didn't walk through there and I found out there's time sharing specialists. I didn't realize that's how some of these practices work. So there can be quite a few specialty specialists there and you don't have to leave no. the primary care facility. Yeah, there's been examples of a person who had, you know, heart condition, very common atrial fibrillation, needed a heart checkup. I finished my exam and walked them across the hall to the cardiologist. Wow. Easy. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. You don't have to go out 30 minutes to somewhere mm-hmm. else, make another appointment or something. No. Right. Great place. So tell, tell us a little bit about you personally, too, who, you know, where you come from, who you are, and a little bit about, about yourself. Gotcha. So I am a military brat, Air Force. My father was in the Air Force, and I was born at West Point. Mother's from Thailand. Okay. And I have three siblings. Parents had four kids in five years. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I played basketball at Charleston Southern University in the Big South. And so after three years, I wanted, I told my dad, hey, I want to model and act. So he sent me out to Los Angeles and I failed at that. Uh, Door closed right away. Right, um, right. <laughs> and then so I was like, okay, well, at least I tried. Yeah. And then I went and I finished my degree at Loyola Marymount University. So spent two years out there finishing my degree okay. and then moved back to Georgia, applied to medical school and got into medical school in Gwinnett at uh-huh. um, the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, the Georgia campus, yeah. yep, which has been open since 2005. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I renewed my lease to my apartment when I got accepted to Gwinnett Medical Center's residency <laughs> program for family medicine. And I was one of the five guinea pigs, wow. um, the first five, and we were all women. Uh-huh. And now there's 61 residents on the campus and two um, sports medicine fellows. You, so, so you live in Gwinnett County? I do. I live in Duluth. Gwinnett. I love Gwinnett. I, you know, if I could be here lifelong, I would. <laughs> and um, one thing that I wanted to clarify yeah, is sure. I have a DO behind my name. Right. Mm-hmm. So the difference between a DO and an MD is there are a million fully functioning physicians in the country, meaning can perform surgery, can deliver babies, can prescribe right. narcotics and benzodiazepines. Mm-hmm. Um, 108,000 of us are DOs. 
Um, so what that means is in medical school, we learn manual manipulation. So 400 hours of something that I, I personally said is basically like chiropractic, massage therapy, and physical therapy all in one as a physician. And we just augment care. So an example would be if a child comes in with an ear infection, yeah. um, if it's spectra ear infection, I would give the antibiotic. But I also have a way of manipulating, trying to um, decrease the pressure and some of the pain by draining some of the fluid out of the eustachian tube. Okay. And that decrease of pressure actually helps the, the child feel better and also helps the parents feel better because their kid stops crying. <laughs> and so I am a DO. Right. And starting in 2020, DOs and MDs will have one accreditation, meaning like one MAC process, and we all train side by side currently. But in the future, in 2020, it'll be one match. So other than surgery or, not surgery, really, I mean, if you compare yourself to a general practitioner, let's say, for lack of a better phrase, um, what are the differences then? Um, well, okay, so 50 per, 56% of DOs go into primary care, which okay. consists of internal medicine, right. family internal medicine, medicine right. and PEDS. The others go into whatever they choose, cardiology, right. neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, so and they never use their hands ever again. They just practice like an MD. So you're along the same lines as an internist to a degree or those um, other? Well, MDs and DOs are fully functioning physicians and can go to any residency. Okay. Right. Uh, we are just trained that the mind and the body, yes. uh, you know, if you just catalyze it, that the body will heal itself. Um, just a more holistic thought process, okay. but we can practice in any form of medicine. Okay. Yeah. So how, how long has that, I mean, there's a trend on doing this like this, right? And gee, gee, when at medical or Northside now, um, you know, it has expanded. I mean, there's quite a few facilities in Gwinnett County. I know mm -hmm. that there was none on this side of the county, and this is why the GMC opened it over here. Uh, are all the facilities similar to that degree then? Um, with DOs and such? Um, DOs can practice just like MDs. You've probably right. been treated or done surgery with a DO. You just know don't know it. unless you look behind their name. Okay. We practice just the same. It's just that a lot of us, more than mm -hmm. half, choose to go into primary care. Okay. Yeah, you know, we just have a heart for primary care. Right. So how long have you been doing this now, then? It's... Um, graduated from medical school in 2014. Okay. Graduated from residency in 2017. So I'm entering my third year of attending hood, being an attending physician that practices that on my own. So do you learn a lot more with, I mean, obviously the, the amount of residents is, has expanded there. I mean, do, is it your colleagues? I mean, do you get together? Do you talk about things going on in, in medicine and the community? And um, well, I am an attending. I actually teach the residents. So because I am proficient in osteopathic manipulative treatment, which mm -hmm. is that manual manipulation, mm -hmm. and half of the residents in the family medicine program are MD and half are DO. The DOs currently need to have a certain amount of osteopathic manipulative treatment training. Okay. So I teach them that. Oh, okay. um, so but we, yeah, I, I teach right. them as an right. attending. So I get to see them once a week. It's Wednesdays. And other than that, we do have CME. So physicians are required to do a certain amount of hours of learning new things in medicine to okay. stay up on the times. So if people come to the, uh, the center here at Peace Street Corners, I mean, they're going to see you on a regular basis. You're out there regularly. You're the lead, obviously. Yes, the I'm lead, the lead right? physician. So I see diapers to the pens and I do pap smears. I refer for mammograms. I do prostate exams. I do child vaccinations, child wellness exams, annuals, um, preventative exams, okay. um, acute visits. If you have sinusitis, mm -hmm. um, gastroenteritis, having diarrhea, oh. I got you. You sprained okay. your ankle. I got you. Right. right. Um, possibly of pneumonia. I got you. We have really? a chest x-ray right. okay. machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't, you don't have to go far. You don't have to leave the city of Peace Street Corners. <laughs> and this, you know, it's an interesting city because for as much as there's 44,000 odd people that live in the city, there's 87% of the people that work in the city actually don't live in the city. Mm -hmm. They actually go, they leave the city, go back home to wherever they go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, corporate health, does that reach to what you want, what you want to say? Yes, that was part of the model. So I don't know about Northside, but for Gwinnett Medical Center, and we just became Northside yesterday, mm -hmm. we had one facility in Suwannee that is a multi-specialty clinic, and it was super successful. So they modeled my clinic, which opened on August 5th right. after that, where you have primary care there, and then right. you have 
five or six different other specialties that timeshare during right. the week. Right. In corporate health as far that as... Is, yes, that is part of it. Right. So the hospital is working on, on corporate health where um, people would be able to come in and get their physicals done with me. All right. Cool. Um, you know, you've um, Thank you. done a lot of different things, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, it's a well-rounded person that you are by Thank doing you. that. Um, what I'd like to ask you is, you know, what, what brought you, what, what got you to pursuing the medical part of it, the med- medicine part? I mean, you were acting, modeling a bit. Yes. Um, what, what turned you on to medicine? When I was younger, uh, so my name is Barbara, mm-hmm. and then I have an aunt, Barbara, we call Aunt Babs, and then my grandmother's name was Barbara as well. When I was younger, I used to give my grandmother massages, and she told me, you have healing hands. And at the time, I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't yes. understand at the time. Um, but it seemed as other doors were closed, the path to medicine was was open. It didn't have its obstacles, but I mm. got into medical school. I, pa- I passed all my boards, and I just I had a heart for healing and the gift of mercy. So I was, it was always important, and I, I really enjoyed people's stories. You know, that's interesting. It almost seems like you were guided that way without even realizing it. Right. So there was, when people asked, was there a time? And I was like, I can't remember just an epiphany. Oh, you're supposed to be a doctor. Right. It was like the path was paved and it was a little bit easier or pointed and not easier, Mm -hmm. but just directed in this path where everything else, the doors were closed immediately in my face. You know, it's funny because Maxwell Glatt, Maxwell Gladwell, I think that's his name. Um, He wrote several books about uh, leadership and stuff. And one of the things he mentions is that you need... You need that little nudges. Nothing's that huge thing that comes across. It's always those little nudges, the right people that talk to you at the right moment that get Mm -hmm. you sort of moving along that path over a period of time. Right. So that's kind of neat to be able to see that. Um, So the professional journey so far that you've experienced, do you have any anecdotes that you want to share about, you know, getting into it and, and, and what stories you may have on it that, like, Different, maybe. Um, well, I guess more so like testimony of when I got into med school, there were only two spots left and I got one of them. So I almost didn't even get into that class. And, and this is the Philadelphia? Or is the this... Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, right. Georgia campus. It's in Sewanee off Old Peachtree Road. Yeah, yeah. Take 85 North exit 109. <laughs> Go right. You know it well. <laughs> yes. Mom down on the left. Yes. yes. Um, but having, like getting in, mm. that was I was very thankful because with as much work that it took, I was very thankful that I had the capacity, the intelligence and the wherewithal and the health to go through it because it's very stressful. And then even in residency, having had um, difficulties there with certain subjects, I would have trouble learning. But I was but the residency did a very good job of giving me opportunities to go above and beyond to learn. So those obstacles then to make it through and then by the end of of residency in 2017, I was named resident of the year. Right. So overcoming those obstacles and, and using that as a platform to, to become great in my field. I mean, determined too, because lots right. of, lots of, I say kids, but lots of young people would, would drop out or, right. you know, maybe chemistry is not their thing. Maybe biology or maybe whatever they're learning could be tough and maybe they find out it's not for them. The cliche, it could have made me or, or it would have broken me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, neat that you're going there like that. Um, so the role, well, we discussed the role a little bit. Um, so what, what what excites you or motivates you when, when you, you know, your day off? You know, do you think about medicine all the time? No, when I go home, I have a lot of really good friends and family, so I enjoy mm-hmm. spending time with them. So that would include, like, having love and fellowship over a mm-hmm. nice meal. Okay. Um, I play basketball, so... There is a league in Perimeter. I play D1, Georgia Sports League. Um, sometimes I'll join one of one of the seasons and play basketball with girls who were active in college or wow. overseas and want to stay active in their 30s and 40s. So I enjoy that. Hmm, what else? <laughs> That's good. And you're a doctor, so yes. you can always see if you're not feeling well or stressing your bones yeah. or something. Right? And then I enjoy traveling as well, whether it be out of town or a staycation just to enjoy yeah. different parts of Atlanta. Have you been um, to places where you might have, I mean, I'm sure on vacation you don't go visit medical facilities, but being in the industry and, and stuff, do you 
see anything that in other cities, other places, other countries that you may have visited, um, where you might look at that and say, you know. Uh, anytime I go overseas and come home, I'm always very thankful for our healthcare system. Let's just put it like that. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the, uh, with the emerging technology and research and the techniques that are out there, are you excited about anything particular out there in the future that's coming that you see? On the horizon, maybe? Um, the one thing that comes to mind is um, the CBD oil. That's a that's a new thing. Yes. Yeah, not Okay. So, well, all right. Someone I know yeah. <laughs> would like to use it, and uh, but she's not uh, feeling that maybe it would help them. Got and you. Uh, So how would that work? How's, uh, is that something that you even can recommend in your um, practice? It is legal in all 50 states. Right. Um, so you don't need a... I mean, you, right, you would don't prefer need... someone who is knowledgeable to tell you how to start and take it as right. a supplement. Right. Um, but you don't it is need legal. Prescri- Correct. You do not need a prescription, but it is legal in all 50 states. So is that something that you would recommend to someone if, they, if um, you felt they needed it? If someone has pain or trouble sleeping and relaxation, mm-hmm. if they're looking for that, yes, I, I do recommend it for pain, relaxation, and sleep. Okay. We, right. we have endocannabinoid receptors in our body. Uh-huh. And so there's a place for them them to go. And um, just like, let's just say somebody is vitamin D deficient, they right. would take a vitamin D supplement. Mm-hmm. If you're deficient in endocannabinoids, then you would take it as a supplement. Okay. Do you find that it helps? So, I mean, some people I would imagine just like pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Pharmaceuticals, when they come out, maybe 50, 80% of the people that take it, it helps. Right. And maybe the other 20 or 30, it doesn't because that's just the way things are. Well, if, if your issue... It, could be possibly due to endocannabinoid deficiency. Right. The top four things that would be would be like migraines, okay, fibromyalgia, really, anxiety, depression, refractory to treatment, mm-hmm. and irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. A lot of times, those patients really, really do well with it. I also like cancer patients dealing with pain. It's mm-hmm. always good for them to okay. to take as an option. Okay, but there's there's rules to it. You want to make sure that it's born in the USA, right? Made born in the USA, yeah. organic. Mm-hmm. In full spectrum without the THC, right? Because right. you know the THC portion is psychoactive, and we're not trying to do that. We're just trying to get the benefits of the endocannabinoid. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Right. And the legal part, anyway, doesn't have any of that, or at least that's the smallest percentage of it. Right? Um, well, if it's full spectrum and you don't want the active THC, it's going to have a point zero 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 two or three percent. Yeah. But yeah, it'll have a tiny, tiny bit, but not enough that it would cause any psychoactive effects. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that may, I mean, there's so many places that sell it. So mm-hmm. you're correct in saying to investigate what, what you're getting. Yes. You definitely want to investigate where yeah. you're getting it from. Yeah, Cause there's but, too many places like uh, even gas stations. I mean, it's just right. Don't, places don't you get it from this. a gas station. It is worth spending the extra money to make sure it's USA grown, organic, right. full spectrum without the THC. I think there's a local pharmacy that sells it, not a, not a chain pharmacy, a local like uh, compound pharmacy mm-hmm. uh, that sells it also around here. Right. Um, so tell me a little bit more about, just a little bit more about the uh, facilities here in Peace Recorders, and we'll share some of those pictures. Of, yeah. of, I, and I know you hit upon it before a little bit, but let's let's talk about that um, a little bit. So the facility has um, a primary care pod, and that's where I am. Right. And the, uh, there also is a physician's assistant. Her name is Molly, and she's with us on Wednesdays, Thursday mornings, and Fridays. And then I'm there all five days. Okay. And we have um, our six rooms, beautiful rooms. Yes, for sure. And, and it has a spa-type feel as soon as you walk in. Hospitality, yes. Right. And then, um, so when you come in, there's also a pod for the specialists. So each morning and each afternoon, you'll have a different specialist that time shares for that morning or afternoon. Okay. Um, if you're there for that. Right. And then for, for us, we're in our, back in our little pod. And if you need a mammogram or x-ray, we have that capability as well. Right. And I understood from the visit when I went there that the, um, the um, I guess it's the mammogram, is a 2D and a 3D machine. Mm-hmm. Yes. So for those people that might need a 3D. So what's the difference between the two? Can you share that as far as 2D, um, 3D? Um, from what I know, and I'm yeah. not an expert on it, is sure. it, you can see things better 
because uh, it's 3D right there. versus yes, two. Yes, all right. Um, <laughs> three maybe I, I, I can go talk to a radiologist. No, and no, I can you're good, you're good, you're good. So yeah, no, it's it's true. Three or two, you know, if you have thick tissues and stuff like that, 3D is really the the way to go. Mm-hmm. So, and it's interesting that it's the same machine that's doing it. So, uh, yeah. so it's there. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, you know, if if uh, I remember taking our in-law, my in-laws to the doctor sometimes, if they had to go get an x-ray, they had to leave where they went, they had to go somewhere else, and this is all in one place. It really does. It's, it's really convenient. If someone comes in and I need to rule out pneumonia, we can send them down the hall to get a chest x-ray. Yep. And if a woman needs a mammogram, we can send her down the hall. Mm-hmm. And if at that particular time, the, co- the specialist that's time-sharing at that time that you need, we can just walk you on over. Right. Um, Dr. Tanya Rutledge is the gastroenterologist. Okay. And so um, if someone needs a colonoscopy, we can just take them on over to do their consult. Um, and do Dr. It. Don Rowe is the cardiologist. He's there on Tuesday afternoons. I've walked a couple people down to him as well. So do they do that stuff there as well? Col- colonoscopy down there also? Um, no, yeah. they have okay. either in the hospital or you okay. know, an endoscopy suite. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, and I know they keep telling me I'm over 50 and I need to do that also. Yes, yeah, so. very important. <laughs> yes, colon what, cancer is preventable if you get your colonoscopy. If you, if you get and there get the early. Removed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything you want to share with us a little bit more about, uh, the facility or, um, the way GMC, I mean, I know that Northside took over a couple of days ago and I don't, we don't know yet how that's going to affect things, but certainly, um. The GMC uh, Gwinnett Medical Sign is still out front. Right, yes, yes, yes. Um, well, um, they chose to plant feet here because it was a, a, you know, a primary care desert, and we're here to serve the community. Yeah. So we, we are open, and you guys should call and get an appointment, 678-312-8430. Is Come there a website in. also? There's yes. a website, I think, right? Um, it's GwinnettMedicalGroup.org forward slash PTC. PTC. But I don't right. know if that's going to change if we'll become a Northside website. So stay tuned. Okay. And I imagine if it changes, they'll probably forward that the URL anyway. Yes. Yeah, yes. So that should be fine. My and, mail forwarding. Yes. On your website. And uh, if, if you want to follow, um, is there any way they can follow you? Um, so my Instagram is at the model doc. So T H E M O D E L D O C. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the model, model doc. doc. Very simple. Okay. Um, and then cool. on Facebook, Dr. Barbara Joy Jones. All right. Yeah. Neat. Excellent. Um, if you have any other questions that you want to put to the doctor, you can put them in the comments. Um, she's liked the page, so she'll get, and she'll get noticed when, yeah. when those comments are made. Um, and if you want to f- visit there, like she said, five days a week, just go make an appointment and you can go out there. Uh, this has been Pete Requina's life, uh, with Dr. Barbara, uh, Joy Jones, yes. DL, and, um, appreciate you coming in. Thank you. I enjoyed it.